This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but more on that later. The true cost of owning a vehicle goes way beyond just the initial purchase price, and there are a lot of other costs to consider to get the real picture. For example, in our comparison today, even with Tesla's recent price drops, the Model Y purchase price is still quite a bit higher than the RAV4 Hybrid. However, when you factor in the cost savings that are associated with driving an electric vehicle, the Model Y true cost of ownership may actually surprise you. But the question really is, are these cost savings enough to make the Model Y cheaper in a five-year period versus the RAV4 Hybrid? First of all, of course, we need to choose which trim level we're going to compare here. There's not a complete apples to apples comparison between the Model Y and the RAV4. Um, and you could make a case to go all the way up to say like the limited trim level, but the hybrid XLE premium trim level has enough features to make it somewhat comparable. So for the bulk of our calculations, we're going to stick with the hybrid XLE premium. Now, when it comes to the actual true cost, if you go to buy one from a dealership today, according to TrueCar, with the all wheel drive powertrain and a basic premium equipment package, the actual true cost from their data is actually somewhere around $37,310 for this specific vehicle. The Tesla Model Y, on the other hand, base price is $52,990, but when you add in fees that Tesla charges, that price actually starts at $54,630. So when you compare these purchase prices, the Model Y is a bit over $17,000 more than the RAV4 Hybrid. However, due to Tesla dropping their prices, the five seat version of the long range all wheel drive Model Y now qualifies for that full $7,500 US federal tax credit. So if we actually subtract that from this total, that brings the net price of the Model Y after the tax credit down to a bit over $47,000, leaving us with a less than $10,000 difference between these vehicles after that tax credit is considered. Now, of course, when it comes to the tax credit, there are still some things that could change when the IRS brings out um, more information in March. But it appears like this long range all wheel drive Model Y will qualify nonetheless, as long as the price stays where it is, because the batteries are made in North America and the car itself is manufactured in North America. So it should qualify for that full credit but we know it at least for sure qualifies between now and uh, till March, as Tesla says on their website. And of course, buyers have to have at least a $7,500 uh, tax liability to be able to claim that full credit. And there are also some income limits uh, for qualifying for this tax credit. But nonetheless, I believe a lot of people will qualify for this credit and it does make a big difference when it comes to the purchase price comparison. And we'll come back and talk more about that later. Okay, so we picked the trim levels for our comparison and we've nailed down a basic purchase cost. But as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot more when it comes to the true cost of ownership for a vehicle than just the purchase cost. So we actually need some more data. We need to know things like the average miles driven per year, energy fuel cost, vehicle efficiency, insurance costs, finance costs, maintenance and repair cost, and also we need to factor in the estimated depreciation after five years. However, before I go through the data and make these calculations, I wanna take a quick break and introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to SPAN for sponsoring this video. The SPAN Smart Electrical Panel eliminates the need for a separate hardwired critical loads panel. Using the iOS or Android app, you can easily move circuits into one of three categories like the must have category, which is given priority during a backup, the nice to have category, which will be powered until your battery system reaches a 50% charge, and the not essential category, which is off during outages, allowing you to only use energy where it is needed most and extend your battery backup time. Try to do that with your existing system. To find out more and get a quote for your particular situation, go over to span.io or click the link in the video description. And when you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put cleaner watt in the comments section so Span knows that I sent you. Okay, so now moving over to the data that we need to calculate our five year true cost of ownership, we need to first of all know the average miles driven by US drivers. According to the Federal Highway Administration, the average miles driven per year by US drivers as of May 31st of 2022 was a bit over 13,400 miles. To make this more of a round number, I'm going to use 14,000 miles driven per year 
by US drivers for our calculations. And that comes out to a nice clean 70,000 miles driven in five years. Next, when it comes to the current uh, fuel cost and energy cost in the United States, according to saveonenergy.com in this article that was updated on January 5th of this year, the average cost of electricity, at least the residential rate in the United States, is just a bit over 16 cents per kilowatt hour. And when it comes to the average gas price per gallon in America, that price comes down according to AAA's data to a bit under $3.36. Now, of course, with those fuel costs, we also need to know how much fuel or how much energy each of these vehicles need uh, to drive this 70,000 miles. So if we go over to fueleconomy.gov, we can see that the Model Y long range all wheel drive version requires 28 kilowatt hours according to their calculations to drive 100 miles. And the RAV4 hybrid all wheel drive is able to drive 40 miles on a gallon of gasoline. Next, we need to consider insurance costs. Now I know insurance costs vary quite a bit based on your driving history, um, how old you are, etc. cetera. Um, however, I wanted to get a really good accurate estimate. So I called my insurance agent and it got two actual quotes for driving a Model Y long range all wheel drive, what would it cost me per year, and a RAV4 hybrid, the XLE premium trim level with all wheel drive. I was quoted a rate of just a bit over $102 per month for the Model Y and just a bit under $79 a month for the RAV4 hybrid. So yes, the Tesla Model Y does cost a bit over $20 more per month to insure, but that's not really a very a large number. And it's actually quite a bit less of a difference than I thought it would be. When it comes to finance cost, I went over to bankrate.com and used their basic calculator to see how much interest you would pay right now at an interest rate of 6% which I know that's kind of high, but interest rates are pretty high right now. And that actually seems to be a somewhat common rate right now for an auto loan. The next thing we need to consider is maintenance and repair costs. Now in general, electric vehicles don't require a lot of maintenance. They don't have oil changes that you need to do, for instance. And uh, although the costs are lower, there still are some costs of maintenance for electric vehicles. Like for instance, with all cars, you have to replace tires and electric vehicle tires and Model Y tires can be a little bit more expensive than other vehicles. And uh, sometimes depending on how you drive the vehicle due to uh, rapid acceleration abilities, electric vehicle tires might actually wear out a bit faster than some other vehicles. But nonetheless, although there is lower maintenance involved with the Model Y versus the RAV4, there still are some maintenance costs involved with the Model Y. So in order to get a fair comparison for these numbers, I went over to Edmunds.com and according to their estimates, the five year maintenance cost for the RAV4 hybrid will come in a bit over $5,300 and the repair cost should be a bit under $700. Do note that they're estimating here driving 15,000 miles per year for this five year estimate. So around 1,000 miles more per year than we're using for our calculations. But nonetheless, I believe this is close enough to give us a good estimate. Once again, using that same 15,000 miles driven per year for a five year period, Edmonds estimates that the five-year maintenance cost of the Model Y would cost a bit over $2,400, and the repair cost over that five-year period would be a bit over $2,100. The last factor that we need to look up before we actually add up all these numbers and come to our conclusions, we need to know the estimated depreciation of these vehicles after five years. So basically what I'm assuming here is that you own each one of these vehicles for five years and you drive around 70,000 miles in that period. And then you sell that vehicle after that five year period and you do the tallies. What was the actual amount of depreciation costs that you had for each of these vehicles? So for instance, if you go to kbb.com, Kelly Blue Book's website and use their calculator, you can see that a 2018 RAV4 Hybrid XLE trim level with 70,000 miles is worth a bit over $23,000 in the private party resale value. Brand new, that vehicle sold for a bit over $29,000. So that means in five years and 70,000 miles, that vehicle actually has a pretty low depreciation percentage of around 20%. Now, of course, the Model Y came out in 2020, so there's not a five-year-old Model Y that we can use for our calculations. But if we just start with this number, the uh, 2020 Model Y long range all wheel drive had an original MSRP of a bit over $51,000 when you included the $1,200 destination and dock fee that was charged at that time. And then once again, according to KBB's data, with 70,000 miles, that vehicle private party resale value is on average a bit over $41,000. So with 70,000 miles, that vehicle has lost around 19% of its value. 
But once again, that's a 2020 model, not a 2018 model. So in order to kind of get a better perspective here, I went ahead and pulled up data for a 2018 long range uh, Tesla Model 3. And you can see that that vehicle had an MSRP of a bit over $50,000 with that delivery fee. And it has a private party resale value right now, if it has 70,000 miles in very good condition, of a bit over $35,000. So that means that the Model 3 long range version, after five years and 70,000 miles, lost around 30% of its value. So I'm gonna go ahead and peg the Model Y depreciation percentage at around 30% after five years and 70,000 miles and the RAV4 hybrid, once again, the XLE premium all-wheel drive trim level at around 20%. And you can see here the estimated resale value after five years using these calculations. So with all this data in hand, let's now crunch all the numbers and see what the true five-year cost of ownership is starting with the Model Y, and then we'll compare that to the RAV4. So if you consider sales tax, energy cost, insurance costs, financing cost, maintenance and repair cost, and then also that depreciation cost. The long range all wheel drive Model Y during that five year period, according to my estimates, would cost you a bit over $43,000 or that would equate to 61 cents per mile. However, this is not factoring in the federal US tax credit of $7,500. So for those who qualify for that full credit, that actually brings that total cost down to a bit over $35,000 during that period of time, or around 51 cents per mile. When it comes to the RAV4 hybrid and specifically that XLE premium all-wheel drive trim, once again, with all those same factors that we talked about, that true cost after five years and 70,000 miles is a bit under $33,000 or around 47 cents per mile. So in that comparison, according to my estimates, the Model Y costs somewhere around four cents per mile more than that RAV4 variant. However, as I mentioned earlier on, a strong case could be made for the RAV4 limited trim level actually being a better apples to apples comparison between the long range all wheel drive Model Y. So I crunched the numbers for that vehicle as well. And according to my estimates, the cost per mile for the limited all wheel drive RAV4 hybrid would actually be somewhere closer to 50 cents per mile. So as you can see, according to my calculations, the long range all wheel drive Model Y should cost just a little bit more per mile over a five year period than the RAV4 hybrid. But nonetheless, there are a lot of factors that could change this. For instance, if the RAV4 hybrid depreciates more than 20%, or if fuel costs go drastically up again, or say if you had solar on your home and you were able to power your home with solar power and lower your cost of uh, powering the Model Y, or the cost could go up for the Model Y if you don't have access to home charging and you have to charge at superchargers all the time, or if you travel a lot and you require a lot of supercharger use because of course, superchargers cost more than 16 cents per kilowatt hour. Nonetheless, I believe these calculations are close enough that some extra cost on either end could swing these numbers either way. But at the end of the day, it's amazing that an electric vehicle that costs quite a bit more at the beginning due to incentives, et cetera, can be that close to cost to a cheaper vehicle like the RAV4. And at the end of the day, the uh, Model Y has more features when it comes to software, and it really is a more premium vehicle. It has more features than the RAV4. You also have to consider that I didn't factor in local incentives. A lot of cities in the United States and also states offer various electric vehicle incentives too. And it might just be that you qualify for a number of incentives in your state or in your local city that might actually push the math to where the Model Y makes more sense. It definitely is worth considering. It's definitely worth crunching these numbers for your exact use case. But of course, the question must be asked, if the Model Y is indeed just a bit more expensive, say for our example, four cents per mile, to drive more expensive than the RAV4 hybrid, is it worth it? In my opinion, it is, not only due to the environmental benefits of driving an electric vehicle, but the added features of that electric vehicle, not having to go to gas pumps, being able to charge at home, and just the convenience of all that. And when it comes to traveling, Tesla's supercharger network allows an electric vehicle to be extremely convenient. So in my opinion, I would say yes, the Model Y is worth a little bit extra cost, over the RAV4 hybrid. But do let me know what you think in the comments section below. Would you rather have the RAV4 hybrid over the Model Y or would you rather have the Model Y over the RAV4 hybrid? I'd love to hear from you. I do wanna say once again, thank you to Span for sponsoring this video. And also a special thank you 
to my Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make these videos possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.